Howdy again, everybody. This is Doc from Thorofan, and uh, well, it's been quite the interesting 48 to 72 hours since the story broke in the New York Times regarding Justify and Bafford and the CHRB and the scopolamine uh, positives and, and all of that. And, you know, you can look at things from whatever side you want. And of course, a lot of the focus is going to be on uh, the potential doings of the CHRB and how they handled it and, and were they transparent and all that stuff. But we here at Thorofan are mostly about education. And really what I wanted to do was forget about all of the other controversy, conflict, things like that. Let's just talk about the drug scopolamine and exactly what it is, where it's found, and what effect it potentially can or cannot have on racehorses and why we do see some of these positives creep up from time to time. So we're gonna go back diving in to Doc's Racing Dictionary as we take a look at scopolamine. Scopolamine is an alkaloid substance that has similar properties and actions to the more widely known and used drug atropine. In humans, the drug is used a lot as one to help with issues such as motion sickness and often help with the symptoms of post-operative nausea and vomiting. It's a naturally occurring substance found throughout the world in what are commonly referred to as detora plants. In the United States, and for the purposes of this segment, one of the most common plants in this group that is looked at is jimson weed as can be seen here. Different parts of jimson weed have different levels of scopolamine, with the seeds often having some of the highest concentrations. Scopolamine can also have some mind-altering effects and, since of course everyone has to experiment with mind-altering substances, there are some pretty interesting cases of intoxication from people ingesting various parts of detura plants or making drinks from them. Scopolamine use in horses is mostly limited to a synthetic drug with similar properties called N-butylscopolamonium bromide, or, for the ease of understanding and my linguistics, buscopan. It is used a lot in cases of what is known as spasmodic colic to relax the muscle of the intestines to alleviate pain. It can also help in what are known as choke cases in horses to relax the esophageal muscle and allow an impaction to pass into the stomach. Finally, considering its mechanism of action, it can also be used as a bronchodilator in horses that suffer from recurrent airway obstruction. Once given as a medication, it has a relatively short onset and duration of action of maybe 30 to 45 minutes on average. The duration of action may be a little longer if it is given via injection into the muscle instead of the vein. Of course, many of these same signs can be gotten from ingestion of scopolamine through contaminated feed or hay although the amount would vary greatly compared to the medical administration. The question obviously on everyone's mind in the Justify case is can the drug be used as a performance enhancer? It depends on how you interpret the results of studies and look at what the drug does. The fact that it does allow for bronchodilation could be interpreted as making breathing and oxygen respiration easier on the horse, as could the fact it provides for a quicker heart rate. In asking around, it seems vets are split in their thinking on this, as some feel it would help with this, but because of the short onset of action and duration of action, it would almost have to be given right before a horse is let over for a race. I have seen one comment where if given at a high enough dose, you can get some anti-inflammatory effects, but I haven't been able to substantiate that claim. And it should be noted that at higher doses, scopolamine is very toxic to horses, causing neurologic signs as well as other serious symptoms, so it would be unlikely anyone would use it at a higher dose because of the serious side effects. A positive test for scopolamine in a horse can be due to either natural exposure via ingesting parts of the jimson weed in feed or pasture, or from administration of the drug to the horse. Determining the difference in the two can sometimes be a little tricky, and often it is a best guess of people to decide if the exposure is natural or intentional. It is hard to get data on what level of detection could mean exposure versus administration, as well as whether that level does have performance enhancing effects on the horse, because a lot of the lab test result data on cases is not shared or made available to science, something that many feel needs to change to get any real answers. Well, there you go. All the information, at least the basic stuff that we know about scopolamine and uh, its effects, its testing, why we do see some of these positives come up, and uh, even sometimes the question maybe of should we even be testing for it if we're seeing a lot of these environmental contaminations. And some people claim at these levels that there really is no, uh, you know, effective biological effect anyway on the horse as far as performance goes. So hope you found this uh, pretty educational. That's the goal of all this, and we want to make sure that we make you, the fans, informed as to what is going on in the racing industry 
and you can make up your mind from there. We just want informed fans out there to make the best decisions possible. So I am Doc from Therofan and I uh, hope you enjoyed this segment. Who knows what the segment next week will be as uh, we just don't know what's going to pop up in the world of racing. But whatever it is, I will be trying to cover it right here on the great Therofan newsletter.